Hello and welcome back to some more Splinter Square Prince Battle for Bikini Bottom, where last time we began our adventures in Jellyfish Fields and played as Patrick for the very first time, and today we are going to be venturing into the Jellyfish Caves and testing our, the skills we've learned uh, with Patrick so far in a bit of a Patrick gauntlet, if you will, because this cave is all designed to make sure you know how to play as Patrick, how to control your throwing abilities, and all that kind of stuff. So... It starts off pretty simple. All we gotta do is pick up this little watermelon right here. The game calls them throw fruits. I'm gonna call them watermelons because it makes things easier. Pick it up and then throw it at the two buttons like so. And make sure you wait until you see the hands appear around the buttons so you know that you are locked on target so that you can hit them exactly where you need to. If you take if you take damage by the spikes, don't worry because there's a piece of underwear waiting for you or a pair of underwear right there. Waiting for you when it gets to the other side so that you can replenish your health. Uh, the reason why this watermelon is here is because if you want to, you can throw it out to that middle uh, platform. I failed that throw horrendously, but you can throw it out to that middle platform, uh, kind of like that, and then pick it up when you get to the middle platform to hit these tiki's over there and get some extra shiny objects. Not required, but a cool little thing you can do nonetheless. Here, you want to wait for the spikes to descend into the ground so that you can uh, jump your way across them, like so. Basically, you want to watch the timing so that you basically you know when the spikes descend into the ground. That means they're not going to come up for a little bit of, uh, for a little while. So you see it to jump across and make your way to the other side. Here, you can either tank the hit from the spikes and jump up to manually activate that uh, that thunder tiki by just uh, hovering near it, or you can uh, hit it from a distance by throwing a watermelon at it, like so. That was not what I wanted to do because I actually missed my target. I hit the tiki next to it instead of the thunder tiki. But you can hit the thunder tiki itself with the watermelon to cause the entire stack of tiki's to crumble upon itself, just like that. Alternatively, you can take you can take a hit by the spikes uh, by jumping on top of them and then jumping up here to hit the, the thunder tiki. It's totally up to you whether you want to do it long range or up close personal. Either way, you can jump off this little rock right here to retrieve a piece of underwear if you uh, were damaged during that process. Then pick up this watermelon, throw it onto the pressure plate to hold the gate open while you walk across it so that you can get to the other side. Now, we're going to have a bit of a climbing gauntlet with these watermelons right here. Throw the first watermelon. I forgot about this. Uh, the watermelon automatically breaks whenever you trigger a sign, so that was my bad. Um, you want to throw the first watermelon right here and then throw it to the bottom so that you can then jump on top of it and then ledge grab like so. I haven't introduced this concept yet, but you can grab ledges in this game. Uh, if you don't quite make a jump but you're up against the ledge, you can grab onto it. It'll automatically The game will automatically grab onto the ledge uh, if you're close enough to be able to do so. Now here, we're going to pick up one watermelon and throw it on top of another watermelon so that we can then jump on top of the double stack and reach this upper ledge right here. Then quickly turn around to leap up to this ledge to grab the sock and then you can leap on back just like so. Now, the previously the watermelons were, one watermelon was already stacked and the other one uh, you need to throw on. But this time, you need to throw the first watermelon towards the middle to serve as a base. Then pick up the other watermelon and throw it on top of that first one so that you can then form the tower, jump on top of the watermelons, and reach the upper ledge right here, and activate this teleport box for later. And now, it's time for a slide. And then like the last one, I can actually let you guys listen to the music this time, because there's no special uh, hidden uh, nooks and crannies or turns to take. This time, all you gotta do uh, is just make sure you dodge the fire. It's pretty obvious you'll either have to jump over it or just uh, stay underneath it, depending on what the situation is. It's pretty obvious as to where they have to jump over or under something. So I'm just gonna let, I'm just gonna sit back, relax, and let you guys enjoy this awesome music. It's a shame you don't usually get to hear the slide music in that uh, that in too long of periods. But there are some longer slides later in the game that you'll, that allow you to hear the slide music in its in its in full duration. That we'll be sure to get to at some point. But for now, remember the last episode when I talked about the concept of freezy fruit? Well, this is when we're actually going to use it for the first time. You want to pick this up and then toss it into the lake so that it'll freeze it solid. And now we can skate across it just like this. You'll notice that the controls a little bit more slippery now that we're actually uh, have uh, that that's actually on ice. But we're going to find one sock right back there. We're going to find a purple shiny object right back here. And once you have both of those things, we can go hurry to skate back to land so that we can jump out of the lake before it before it melts back into water. Now then, uh, the, by the way, the purple shiny object wasn't required. It's just something that I wanted to get because it's a pretty high value object. Now we're going to break this duplicatotron so that it can't spawn any enemies. And they want you to use the watermelon to, uh, to take out enemies like this, but it's you don't really need to do that. The, 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 the belly bump attack as Patrick is just... Um, is effective enough as it is but what I will like to point out is that you can actually uh, do a belly flop near an enemy to stun it pick it up and then throw it at the button like that 
which is very useful for actually opening for opening up this cage so that you can actually access it like this and then destroy the Wicketotron causing the hammers to spawn as well as grabbing the golden spatula just like so. And I recommend you uh, you grab the, you destroy the duplicate drone first because while you're in the golden spatula animation, you are immune to the damage to the explosion damage from the duplicate drone. So yeah, I may have said that a little bit fast, but also I'll recap. You can belly flop next to this uh, next to any enemy, uh, well a any big enemy. Like if you do it next to a fodder, it won't do anything. But a big enemy like this, you can stun it and then you can pick it up and throw it into anything you like. Uh, just but if you're trying to hit the button, just make sure you wait for the hands to, sh to show up around it so that you can lock onto the target you actually need to you need to hit. Anyway, that is this area, that, that is the Jellyfish Caves uh, cleared out. Not too bad, uh, but now at this point you should be very confident in your abilities to use Patrick, which is good, because now we're about to use that stun and throw technique in yet another section, the Jellyfish Lake. Ahoy there! Squidward tells me you're looking for the King Jellyfish. Yes. Good thing, too. That monster has been stinging all my good customers in their poop decks. I hear that you can find him up top of Old Sport Mountain here. Go hook that beast, sailor! Oh boy, Mr. Krabs. I'll see what I can do. Alright. So, King, King Jellyfish is waiting for us all the way up at the top of the Jellyfish Lake. You can kind of see a little something up there. He'll be waiting for us. But to get to that point, we gotta make our way through all of this. This entire area has gotta be cleared out before we can get our way up there. So, let's get started. Before we get too far, allow me to introduce you to a new type of enemy. So this is a Tartar sauce enemy, and unlike previous enemies, not only can he attack you from afar, but he will not go down with just a single hit. It's going to take two hits to go down. So first things first, you just want to make sure you dodge all the projectiles, so you want to keep an eye out for when he's ready to shoot. He'll always do that kind of surprise animation before he's about to fire his little Tartar sauce gun, and then he'll always f fire the, uh, fire those little sauce, uh, fire the sauces in the same kind of three-shot pattern. And it's, uh, there is a little bit of unpredictability depending on how much you move around. If you're in the same general location, he'll, t he'll generally fire the same pattern. But if you move around a bit, he'll he's, he'll sometimes throw shots all over the place to try to try to throw you off a bit. But either way, you just gotta go up to him, hit him once, and then hit him again to knock him out of commission. Still goes down pretty easily, but he takes a little bit more effort and awareness to make sure you don't get uh, hit uh, caught off guard by any of his attacks uh, to make sure you take him out. Anyway. Remember when I said we're going to put that stun and throw ability to the test? Well, we're about to put it to test right now, because Mrs. Puff's waiting for us over there, and she's got a mission for us. Hello, Mrs. Puff. Hello, Patrick. I've got a job for you to do. Oh, boy. I found a golden spatula, but those robots out on the island stole it and threw it into the lake. If you can figure out how to get it back, you're welcome to it. Sure enough, Mrs. Puff. So the way we get it back is we have to drain the lake. You'll notice that all of these towers are just pouring water into the lake. So we're going to drain it by destroying every single one of them. How are we going to do that? Well, the only way to reach them is to stun these enemies, pick them up, and throw them at the towers just like that. Because there aren't any watermelons nearby. So, so the only way we can actually uh, reach them is to stun them and throw them. And as you can see, I'm, I'm being a little bit quick with my shots. I'm not necessarily waiting for the hands to throw because I'm just I'm, I've played the game enough to the point where I'm confident that my sh my shots are actually going to land even before the hands show up. Uh, but I do still I do still recommend waiting for the hands to show up uh, if you're new to the game so that you can kind of get a feel for the targeting system. But the, the longer you play, like, the more you play the game, the more confident you'll become in your ability to to kind of eyeball the shots. But either way, not too hard to just uh, stun all the enemies, pick them up, and throw them at the water towers to make sure you can drain the lake and grab that golden spatula waiting for you right over oh good lord okay that was close almost got knocked into the the goo at the last second there but yeah jump down here and grab your golden spatula yeah you don't need to go back to miss you don't need to go back to mrs puff to uh for any reason after you pick this up but you can go back to her if you want to get a little bit of neat dialogue but if you don't you can just uh, hop across these problems to proceed with the rest of the level but i am going to go back to talking to mrs puff just so we can get a Nice little extra bit of dialogue as a, as a reward for a job well done. Well done, Patrick. You're a real star. Can I get a cookie? No. Well, it's worth a shot. Again, there's a bus stop here. 
there is a reason for this one. We will need this bus stop later in the game. Uh, in about 12 episodes. Uh, sorry, I think a lot. Yeah, we'll need it in about 11 episodes. But not right now. We, 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 we can do this whole section as Patrick uh, for the time being. Yeah, so uh, Patrick can't sneak up on these things. Uh, even if you try to tiptoe, it, it, it won't. It won't work. They'll still go away. SpongeBob's the only one who can actually approach them slow enough to where the shishikis won't disappear. Um, but yeah, I'll show that off. I'll show that off actually a little bit later because there's one, there's one sock later in the game that I can specifically think of right now that is going to be predicated on our on the our ability to uh, use that to our advantage. Anyway, I did a little bit fast there, but you can kind of take this out in any order you want. I typically like to set off the Thunder Tiki chain reaction by just jumping on top of one of them, and standing back and letting the explosion chain reaction go off, and that'll destroy the Duplicatotron. I chose instead to knock the fodder into the Duplicatotron, which then also set off the chain reaction, but it's up to you, however you want to do it. Um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of freedom in how you choose to take out the enemies here. Uh, I, uh, but now you want to make sure you knock the Tartar sauce off like that, so you can move on uh, without, uh, without any worries whatsoever. Nice little checkpoint right here. Now here, uh, something cool you can do is you can actually knock the Tartar Sauce into the Thunder Tiki like so, um, to destroy it. But be, but again, because it doesn't go down in one hit, it it, it won't kill instantly like it would if I if I tossed a fodder into it or something like that. So yeah, it's just something to keep in mind that it is very cool how you can uh, create chain reactions by knocking enemies into each other. That's a very neat thing you can do that I will be doing quite a lot throughout the course of the game, whether I, whether I intentionally do it like I'm about to do uh, right here. Or if I, yeah, I got, I got all three of them in one shot right there. Or I, the, I'll also likely accidentally do it many times, just in the heat of combat, because combat's going to get real hectic, uh, real fast the, the further we go on through this game. It's pretty simple now, but it won't stay this simple and uh, easy forever. Anyway, so these Tiki's are rock-hard stone Tiki's, which the only thing that can destroy them is a Thunder Tiki like this, but they work pretty nicely for actually, uh, for picking them up and throwing them around to... Uh, for things such as the, the Patrick Teeter Totter, which I will be showing off in about uh, in about 12 episodes. Anyway, uh, you don't need to stun any of these guys. You can just kind of uh, bonk into all of them. Uh, excuse me. Now, what you want to do is you want to jump up to hit the Thunder Tiki to set off the chain reaction to cause the Thunder Tiki's to uh, sorry the Stone Tiki's to get destroyed, as well as the Kidotron right behind it. And if you want a purple shiny object, there's one waiting for you right over there. It's a bit risky to get though. Uh, because it's uh, it's hiding underneath the bridge, but if you jump out, uh, if you try to jump out to get it, um, you can kind of bounce back to this platform, like I did. Like you can uh, bounce back to the platform and then jump up here after you get it uh, to, to land safely. It's kind of a tricky move to pull off. But basically, the idea is to land, land in the like jump under the bridge, uh, land in the goo as you grab the shiny object, and then that'll automatically bounce you back to this platform, which you can then jump up here and you'll land safe and sound. Alternatively, you can just drown in the goo, and then it'll respawn you back a little bit earlier. Like, if you want to do this without dying, then that is what I recommend, uh, that's what I recommend doing. Anyway, now we can move on, and this is why I wanted to make sure you kept grinding for shiny objects, because we need 2,000 shiny objects in order to open this gate. It seems a bit excessive, I know, but it's not that bad as long as you've been grinding uh, up until this point. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, if you've, if you, if you're coming here from the rehydrated version of the game, and this is your first time playing the original. You may remember that the uh, the pay gate for that is significantly less than it is in this game, which is probably one of the changes. That's one of the changes that I think was actually good about Rehydrated is the fact that they did lower that gate because it really there's really no reason for it to be as expensive as it is. Uh, it seems a bit excessive, but either way, no big deal as long as you keep yourself as long as you keep grinding throughout. We're gonna knock the starter off the edge like so. Grab the underwear as we go along, and we can keep on moving our way through the level. And you can see a sock so tantalizingly out of reach. I wouldn't recommend risking the jump. We're just gonna we're gonna go the long way around and make sure we can actually safely acquire that. And there's gonna be Duplicatotron right up here. We're gonna make a beeline straight for it. Uh, hug the hug hug the right wall right here. Then hit the Duplicatotron, back out, and mop up any enemies that it spawned in as a result. Like I said, you can hit the enemies first, but it's just gonna spawn in more enemies afterwards. So I always recommend. Well, I, I almost always recommend you go for the Duplicatotron first. There are some instances where it's that's not always the case, but I'll I'll address this as we come about. Anyway, uh, to get a sock, you want to jump across these platforms, like so. Making sure you space your jumps out is like you, you, basically you don't want to you don't want you don't want to press the A button too quickly like this. You want to jump and then wait a bit to make sure you space your jumps out as long as you possibly can to make sure you actually nail these jumps, kind of like that. So grab the sock, hop on the mushroom to uh, bounce your way back here, and then hey, okay, that was not part of the plan. I did not intend to fall off there, but I believe the checkpoint yeah the checkpoint's right here, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, the intent was not to fall off the, the ledge there, but it, uh, it, it kind of happened anyway, so, that's unfortunate, but like I said, checkpoints was right behind me, so, 
wasn't that big of a deal. Okay, so what I recommend doing here is picking up the Thunder Tiki and then throwing it at the Tartar Sauce like this. Um, to knock it back, because if you don't knock it back, it can be a little tricky to get around, because he is very, very unrelenting with his Tartar Sauce gun, uh, so it kind of makes it tricky to, to safely jump up here. So I recommend using the Thunder Tiki to knock him back before you make the jump. Anyway, remember that sock I mentioned earlier? Well, in order to get it, it's down here. Uh, you want to, uh, instead of going up the, the obvious path, you want to take the lower path to grab five blue shiny objects, and a sock waiting for you at the bottom of these ledges, just like so. Now we can t uh, now we can walk up the main path to reach the top. We're almost at the top of, of, of Jellyfish Lake, which means we are almost ready to face off against our first boss battle of the game. So that's exciting. And if you're and if, if you're ready to switch back to playing SpongeBob, don't worry, we're almost there. You can see the bus stop waiting for you right over there. And that is when we're going to switch back to playing a SpongeBob, and then we will be able to fight our first boss battle of the game. And I'll, and I'll introduce you to another gameplay mechanic. Anyway, take out these two enemies, the fodder and the hammer just like so you want to jump up to grab this uh platform to extend it uh, to, to pull it down so that you can uh walk up here you don't need to walk up here you can get uh you can make your way across the the the, the ledges by taking the under pathway the underside passageway but I, I like going up here so i can actually get the shiny objects waiting for you up top uh then i like to uh activate the, jump on top of the thunder tiki then jump over the stone tiki's like so and then make your way over here and say goodbye to Patrick for now. Don't worry, we'll be playing as him uh, soon. But for now, we're going to switch back to SpongeBob and introduce you to a new gameplay mechanic, wall jumping. SpongeBob can jump up walls when this symbol appears. Jump against a side wall and press the A button to jump again. Yeah, so when we're hydrated, this is very uh, scripted in the sense that you just kind of match the A button. But in this version, you have to actually manually aim your ability. So you, ju you jump up against the wall, press the A button, then press the A again as you uh, move back and forth. But instead of just mashing the A button, you actually need to aim. So, like, you press A, then press right to pull to the right. Uh, press A and pull left, pull right, pull left, pull right. Pressing the A button as you hit the wall and readjusting the left control stick as you go up to make sure you are flinging in the correct direction. Uh, and the, the harder you hold the left stick, the faster you'll fling up the... The faster you'll fling up the wall. So, it's a... Uh, it, it's much more... You're much more in control of it than you... Uh, okay, I keep, I keep missing this. You're much more in control of your fate to get up this thing than you are uh, in Rehydrated. Because it's very, very scripted in that game. Anyway, now we have finally reached the top of Jellyfish Lake. But before we go any further, you want to make sure you knock these two Tartar Sauce off the cliff. So that they can't cause you any harm. While you are collecting your Golden Spatula and celebrating all the work you've done so far. You can have a... You have a, an entire overview of the Jellyfish Fields level up until this point. In the distance, you can see Jellyfish Rock, where we started our adventures, and you can see the Jellyfish uh, uh, Caves area, which we made our way through to get to this point, and you can oversee the Jellyfish Lake that we just traversed up here. You can see it all in, gl in, in glorious detail. It's kind of overlook of the adventure we've gone up until this point, and take it all in before we head up Mount Spork, or Spork Mountain, whichever way you want to say it, and go face off against King Jellyfish. Gosh, everyone is trying to help out today. Step quietly there. That King Jellyfish is just up at the top of this path. Good luck. You'll need it. Thanks, Bubble Buddy. All right. Now it's time. As you can see, there's a lot of underwear here because it expects, uh, just in case you took a lot of damage at this point, there's a lot of opportunities for you to replenish your health before your boss battle. Alright, so here's how this boss battle works. You have to wait for him to hit the ground, then jump over the shockwave he's gonna send out like so, then jump, double jump up, and then spin attack to deal damage to him. You cannot damage him until he hits the ground. So again, wait for him to hit the ground, which he's gonna do any second now. And then as soon as he hits the ground, he'll send out his shockwave, which you can jump over by double jumping. And then double jump up one more time to hit him like this. It's a very easy first boss battle, and to be clear, the boss battles are certainly not the strongest part of this game. Um, the, the level design, platforming, and camera, and movement are, 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 are all what what this game really excels at. But, you know, they're, they're, they're just kind of passable for the time being. And certainly very easy. Yeah. 
you've gotten the King Jellyfish Jelly. Return a Sprinter for your reward. Now, I should clarify, they're not all this easy. They're not all this um, this straightforward and, and monotonous. There are there are some boss battles later in the game that are actually really, really well put together, really, really fast-paced, and really, really keep you on your toes, and are really exciting to play. It's just that, you know, it's, it's, it's the introductory boss battles. The first one of the game, pretty simple, just a nice way to ease you into the concept of boss battles. Um, but now, I want I, I recommend you hit this teleport box. Um, you don't need to, but, you know, it's, it's there just in case. Now it's time, as a reward for all of the trouble you've gone to up until this point, to get to the top of, to, to make your way through Jellyfish Rock, through the Jellyfish Caves, across Jellyfish Lake, and up to the top of Spork Mountain to battle the King Jellyfish. Your reward for all that is one final slide to close out the level and send yourselves out of this level with a bang. But, uh, sadly we can't just sit back and enjoy the ride because we do have a sock to get, so... For our first run through, what I recommend you do is I recommend you double jump up to grab the blue and purple shiny objects like this. Then jump off the slide um, by sliding off right here and landing on this path uh, passageway like so. And turning with the camera. Here's a pro tip for you. Don't just turn with Lustic, turn with the camera as well. Because that's going to be what helps you make sharper turns. Because uh, you, you'll, you'll, ha you'll have extra turn speed if you use the camera to turn like this. In addition to just uh, moving left and right with the left analog stick. Anyway. Yeah, so the reason I said for the first run-through is because, um, uh, uh, you don't have to do two run-throughs, um, because obviously, as I just demonstrated, you can get the sock on your first run-through, and that's all you really need to do in the slide. But I figured, because, uh, I haven't really let the, I haven't really let the slide music speak for itself all that much, I figured we'll do two run-throughs just for the fun of it. Plus, we can also get some more shiny objects by, uh, jumping into those Thunder Tiki's that you see. So my first run-through, I hit, I grab those shiny objects. This run-through, I'm gonna hit the Thunder Tiki's to make sure, uh, actually, I might have accidentally set them off by myself, um, but either way, now what we're going to do is I'm just going to sit back, relax, and let you guys enjoy the music for one final slide before we close out Jellyfish Fields. See, no problem. You can do anything you set your mind and your muscle to. Yeah, as you can see, I was I was deliberately bumping into those Thunder Tiki's there, because uh, obviously when you hit a Thunder Tiki, you get some extra Tiki's, sorry, extra shiny objects for doing so. So I wanted to grind a little bit while we're on the slide. But yeah, sliding music, sliding this game is so awesome. Anyway, that is it for Jellyfish Field. So now to end things off, we're going to bounce our way back to the main Jellyfish Rock and collect our reward from Squidward, because as we recall, the whole point of this adventure was to get the, jellyf the King Jellyfish Jelly, so that we can give oh, it to Squidward. Yeah. Oh, that feels so much better. Anything for my best friend Squidward. Can I rub some on? Um, what if I just gave you this? And there is the final golden spatula that we can collect in Jellyfish Fields. We have explored every square inch of Jellyfish Fields to collect all the golden spatulas we can, but you notice we did miss two socks, or I say miss, but, but those are the two socks that we couldn't get. The first one was had to do with that that bowling mini game I showed you, and another one was uh, off to the le off to the left path in Jellyfish Lake. You may have seen a tartar sauce gu uh, guarding it that I just kind of ignored because we need another ability to get that that we don't have yet. So don't worry, uh, we will be coming back to Jellyfish Fields in episodes eight and fourteen respectively to clean up what we missed. But for now, we're just going to take the taxi back to Bikini Bottom and close out the episode by trading in our 10 socks to Patrick to collect a golden spatula from him. And you may notice uh, we don't quite have enough to trade in a sh uh, the shiny objects to get a golden spatula from Mr. Krabs. But even if we did, I wouldn't do it and I don't recommend you do either because... Um, any time, even if you have enough to trade it into uh, Mr. Krabs, there are going to be many pay walls that you have to uh, encounter throughout the levels um, that are going to stunt your progress if you don't have enough shiny objects. So I recommend you just wait to pay Mr. Krabs until we get into the to the later stages of the game when we have more shiny objects and when we have an ability that's gonna uh, that's gonna make grinding for shiny objects exponentially easier. So just trust me. For as tempting as it may be to trade in shiny objects for, to Mr. Krabs, it is going to be well worth the wait if you just hold on a little while longer. Uh, and then we can, and then I'll show you how to grind. But for now, let's just trade in the shiny, uh, the, the socks for Patrick. Wow, SpongeBob, you found some! Now they're back home, safe where they belong. Here's your golden back scratcher. Spatula. I don't speak Italian. 
And that will be it for now. So, next time we're going to uh, use... We're going to uh, head into this new area, downtown Bikini Bottom, and we're going to see what's waiting for us over there. But for now, that'll be for, that'll be for this episode. Thanks for watching. See you for next time to catch you all tomorrow for some more. Spongebob's Grand Prince Battle for Bikini Bottom. Goodbye.